So welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. We are dealing with human anatomy today. In human anatomy, we are looking at granular epithelia. This is Dr. Bison EM. Let's get into it. So our learning objectives for today, number one, we're going to classify what granular epithelia is. We'll look at exocrine glands, endocrine glands, and the clinical application that are associated with granular epithelia. Granular epithelia is formed by cells specialized to produce secretion. Okay, so there's what we call epithelial cells that are in glands. Okay. So these cells synthesize, store, and secrete extracellular products that are not used by the cell itself, but are of importance to other parts of the organism, but are of importance to the other parts of the organism. All right. So it's very, very important to know granular epithelia as it is found in so many parts of the body, as we're going to see in this lecture as we go on. Granular epithelia develops from covering epithelia by means of cell proliferation. Very soon I'll be showing you a diagram on how Granular epithelia is formed from covering epithelia. Remember the last video that we looked at on covering epithelia and we described covering epithelia. If you didn't watch that video, just check in the bow. I've put a link for that video so that you can watch it. So granular epithelia in fetal life develops from covering epithelia by means of cell proliferation and invasion of subjacent connective tissue followed by further dis differentiation. This is a diagram that shows that, uh, that statement that I just showed you earlier. So in fetal life, this is your covering epithelia. And then this is proliferation of the epithelia and then it differentiates into a gland. So this light green portion here, is the exocrine gland. This is the gland. So this is the gland that has specialized epithelial cells that produce products to be used in the organism. Okay. So classification of glands, there are two types of classification of glands based on whether the gland has got a duct system, this portion here that I'm highlighting where the cancer is here, the duct system, or it has no duct system, like here. So glands that have got a duct system are what we call exocrine glands. And glands that do not have a duct system, like this gland here, this one and this one, these are called endocrine glands. Their products are delivered to where they are needed through the blood. Okay. So this is what we were talking about. Exocrine glands maintain connection with the surface epithelia via the tubular ducts. Endocrine glands are ductless and they release their secretory product into the bloodstream. And the bloodstream will deliver the product to where it is needed. So exocrine glands histologically are composed of two parts. The first one is a secretory portion. It contains the cells responsible for the secretory process. Those green cells that I showed you earlier. And the second part is the system of ducts. These transport the secretion to the exterior of the gland. Now, let's look at classification of exocrine glands. Okay, so functional classification, this is according to secretory mechanisms. So exocrine glands can be merocrine. Merocrine secretion is where the product is secreted through exocytosis. 
there is no part of the cell that is damaged. Apocrine secretion is where the secretion product is secreted together with the apical pore of the cell. So the apical pore of the cell gets damaged. Horocrine secretion is a type of secretion where the entire cell gets destructed or destroyed for it to secrete its product. So that is classification according to the secretory mechanisms. Number two is on the basis on how the secretory, the secretory product is produced. All right. Number three is based on the type of secretion. So your glands can either be serous glands if they secrete a watery substance, or they can be mucous glands if they secrete a mucous secretion, or they can be seromucous glands if they are mixed. They secrete both watery and mucous secretion. So this statement here is just trying to explain what I was explaining. Merocline or eccrine secretion, the secretory product is released by exocytosis. Secretory granules leave the cell without any further loss of cell substance. The glands that work by eccrine secretion include the exocrine pancreas and salivary glands. Exocrine pancreas and the salivary glands. Okay, so these are the glands, these are the salivary glands. As you can see, this orange part here is the secretory portion. This yellow part here is the duct system. And they are secreting by eccrine secretion or merocrine secretion through exocytosis. So as you can see, these are secretory vesicles. And the secretory vesicles fuse with the cell membrane on the apical surface of the cells and they release the substance. Okay, this is how merocrine secretion works. Look at this statement here. Secretory vesicles releasing their contents via exocytosis. Secretory vesicles releasing their contents via exocytosis. Apo apical or apocrine secretion is the apical part of the cytoplasm of the cell is lost together with the secretory product. For example, the female mammary gland. So the female mammary gland secretes its product of secretion by apocrine secretion. The example is here. So this, as you can see here, the cells here, the apical surface is lost together with the product of of secretion. The type of glands that secrete their products like this are the female mammary glands. Horocrine secretion is breakdown and discharge of the entire secretory cell and its product. For example, the sebaceous glands of the skin to produce sebum. The sebaceous glands of the skin to produce sebum. They secrete using the process called horocrine secretion. So this is an example of horocrine secretion. The cells are being disintegrated, and when the cells are disintegrated, they produce their secretions. So it's very important for you to know the type of secretion and the type of... Uh, the type of uh, secretion and the type of secretion product that the cells produce because those are used as classification system. Histological classification according to the duct system, simple, the ducts are not branched, compound with a branching duct system. So if your branched, if your ducts are not branched, then that is a simple gland. If your ducts are branched, that is a compound gland. And then there's another type of classification according to the secretory portion. If the secretory portion of the gland is shaped like a tube, then that is a tubular gland. 
for example, the glands of the intestines and the stomach. Arsini or alveoli glands are flask shaped with narrow centrally placed lumen, for example, the pancreas, the parotid salivary gland. The other classification of the tubular arsini, there's a combination of the tubular ends with a sac like dilatation. For example, the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. So this is classification according to the secretory system and the, the duct system. So as you can see here, as you can see, the duct here is just one, it's not branched. So this is a simple tubular gland. Why? The duct is not branched and the secretory portion is like a tube. So this is a simple tubular gland. Here, the, 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 the secretory portion is like a tube, but the ducts are branched. So this is a simple branched tubular gland. This is coiled, so this is simple coiled tubular. This is an arsini here, which is not branched, so this is simple arsini. Arsini that is branched, this is simple branched arsini. Now, let's concentrate on these ones that are beneath here. Have you seen here the duct systems are very branched? So this is a compound tubular. Compound arsini, compound tubular arsini, because the secretory portion are both tubular and arsini. Now, let's look at another classification of glands. Okay, so we classify glands according to the nature of their secretions. The nature of their secretions. So we talked about this already. We said if they produce a non-viscous watery fluid such as sweat, milk, tears, or digestive juices, those are serous glands. Those are serous glands. But if they form mucus, which is mixed with water, those are mucus glands. So examples of mucus glands include sublingual glands. These are mucus glands. Serous glands include the parotid gland and glands of the intestines and the mammary gland as well. Mixed glands are those that produce both serous and mucus secretions. Examples of these types of glands include the submandibular glands. All right. So this is an example of a tubular gland in the wall of the intestines. Simple tubular gland. So as you can see, this is the epithelia in the intestines, and then it forms a tube here. Because this gland here is a tube, so we're going to classify it as a simple tubular gland. Gland. It is simple because the secretory portion here is not branched. On your right side here, this is a histological picture. As you can see, this is the gland right here. Under the microscope, this is how it appears. All right. So, sweat glands. Are simple coiled glands. So as you can see, these are simple coiled glands here, coiled glands, and this is a histological picture here. These are coiled glands here, as you can see, coiled glands. All right. So this is just another picture of a simple arsini gland. This is a secretory portion here. As you can see, it is like a flask. So the simple arsini. And then this here is a duct system and it's not branched. That's why it is a simple arsini gland. This is a histological picture of a simple arsini gland here. Simple arsini glands that are found mostly in the pancreas. Simple branched arsini, the sebaceous glands. Simple branched arsini, sebaceous glands. So this is this, the, the picture of a simple branched arsini. Okay. 
So as you can see, the secretory portion here is like a flask. But these two secretory portions are from one duct system. That's why we say one duct system and the duct system branches to form two, two secretory portions. So it is a simple branched arsenite. On your right side here, this is the histological picture. As you can see, this is the duct system and then these are the secretory portions here. Okay. Compound branched tubular glands include Brunner glands of the duodenum. The duct system is branched. The secretory portion is branched. These are the examples. Compound branched tubular. The compound, the branched, and the tubular. Compound arsenide glands are found in the pancreas. And this is the histological picture here. Compound arsenide glands. So these are arsenide glands, arsenide glands, arsenide glands, and they are very branched. You see the duct system, the, the duct system here is branched this side, branched this side, and branched this side. That's why they're called compound arsenide glands. Compound tubular arsenide glands are found mostly in the submandibular salivary glands. Submandibular salivary glands. And this is the, the picture here. So as you can see, this part here is arsenide. This part here is arsenide. But this portion here appears tubular. And this portion here appears tubular. So, because there is a portion for a tube and a portion for a flask, they are called compound tubular arsenide glands. Okay, this is another histological picture here. So, this is the duct system here. And then this is the secretory portion. Secretory portion. Now, in glands, there are what we call specialized cells called myoepithelial cells. These myoepithelial cells are able to contract. When they contract, they push the content of the duct of the gland through the duct system and to the epithelial surface. So that is the function of myoepithelial cells. So endocrine glands. Now, let's go to endocrine glands. Endocrine glands are ductless glands. Their connection with the surface epithelia is lost during embryonic development. Their specific products are hormones that are released directly into the bloodstream. So each epithelial cell of the endocrine gland is in direct contact with the blood capillary. Okay, so the major morphological features that you should look up for in endocrine glands include number one, they are ductless. Number two, they are rich in vascularization as well as innervation. And they've got special histological structure. There are three types of endocrine glands, the trabecular, follicular, and disseminated endocrine glands. Trabecular, follicular, and disseminated. Let's look at these examples in detail. So the trabecular type is made from the codes of the cells. For example, the adenohypophysis. This is the anterior pituitary gland, the parathyroid gland, and the adrenal glands. Okay. The trabecular type, they are made from the codes of the cells. The codes of the cells. Let's hope I have a picture here. Follicular cells, the cells from spherical, so the cells form spherical structures, e.g. the thyroid gland. So as you can see here, look at this. So follicular type, this, they make spherical structures. They're more like follicles. The glands are more like follicles. They're shaped like follicles. So this, this, these are the epithelial cells 
and then the epithelial cells form a spherical structure. When you see this type of glands, under endocrine glands, these are follicular cells. Remember, the trabecular type is made from the cords of the cells. Okay, so this is the thyroid and it's a follicular endocrine glands. Have you seen this? Follicular endocrine glands and they've got a very rich blood supply. A very rich blood supply. The blood supply is what carries their product called the hormones to the site of action. The disseminated type, in the disseminated type, the endocrine cells are placed in groups or separately in another organ. For example, they lay dig cells in the testes, the langerhan islets of the pancreas. Okay, and then this is the example. So these are the islets of the pancreas here. Okay, so these are your your disseminated endocrine cells. All right, so that marks the end of this lecture. If you want to join our physical classes, we meet every day. We meet every day. Register for classes using this number 0953073. I'll repeat again, 0953077213. This is Dr. Bison EM. I love you and enjoy histology. Until next time. So make sure to find these notes in detail in Basic Histology by Janquila. The 15th edition is out and Wita's Functional Histology. Register for classes and all this data will be made available for you.